and presents today with a degenerated left hip secondary to osteoarthritis. She's here today for stem cell treatment of the left hip. We're taking the patient back to the room uh, where she'll be seated on the table. An IV is started in the anacubital fossa uh, through which to give sedation. She'll be sedated with four milligrams of Versed, which does relieve the patient's anxiety as well as makes the procedure very tolerable uh, with a modest amount of sedation. After being sedated, is laid face down on her stomach, uh, exposing the area of the posterior iliac crest where we will be drawing our bone marrow aspirate. The area of the crest to draw the bone marrow aspirate is identified under fluoroscopy. The area over the skin is sterilely prepped and draped. A 1% lidocaine skin wheel is placed where the trochanter will be introduced into the skin. After she's localized with local anesthetic, a Jamshidi trocar is placed through the skin, watching under fluoroscopy to make sure the trochanter is placed into the iliac crest. Uh, after the trochanter is introduced into the iliac crest, uh, bone marrow aspirate is aspirated uh, to approximately 60 cc's. The bone marrow aspirate is then handed to the registered nurse who spins the sample for 12 minutes. The patient is laid prone. The left hip is evaluated under ultrasound, paying particular attention to the positions of the femoral artery and femoral vein, vascular structures, and the capsule of the left hip. The skin is sterilely prepped and draped over the left hip. A needle is placed under direct ultrasound guidance down to the capsule of the hip where she is injected with the stem cell concentrate. After the stem cell aspirate is injected into the capsule, it's followed by a platelet-rich plasma. Yeah. The growth factors in the platelet-rich plasma work with the stem cells to accelerate the healing cascade. Okay. After the stem cell and PRP injection, a bandage is placed over the injection site. The patient is directed to have minimal ambulatory activity for the first two weeks and no weight-bearing exercise for the following month. We hope and sees a significant decrease in her pain level after the stem cell injection and a increase in her ability to do her daily living activities.